Thank you for having me, uh, and thanks for the introduction, Kaziah. Uh, yeah, as, as she mentioned, I've been working in APAC for a, a long time, as you can tell by the, the accent, I'm Australian uh, by birth, uh, but I've been living and working across China and the rest of Asia for the last uh, 10 years. Actually, I lived in China for five years, and then I moved home to Australia and decided it wasn't as exciting there anymore, so I came back to Singapore. And I started a company here uh, which uh, works with clients to help them develop their digital marketing strategy and digital business strategy. Okay, so actually I've, I've started two businesses here and I'm going to be talking about uh, some of the experiences that I've had working across both of these businesses. So we have a consulting firm which works with companies to help them undergo digital transformation. And the other business is uh, an e-learning platform which teaches people how to do all sorts of digital marketing skills as it applies here in Asia, and we're about to launch this business. Uh, so, I'm extremely passionate about the human side of technology. So, you know, we talk a lot about this, and, you know, Sebastian just mentioned in his introduction as well, uh, that, you know, companies, when they start talking about digital transformation, they focus on the technology side of things. What I'm really interested in is the human capital side of things. What are we doing from, for our teams and for our people to make sure that they're actually on this journey with us as well, not just looking at the technology implementation. So my experience, uh, it spans a whole range of different companies. So I definitely, I come from a marketing and advertising background. So all of the companies above the line, the ones that I've worked for and the ones below are clients that I've worked with over the years. So my expertise is definitely uh, from a strategy background, working across digital, and what I've done is I've taken all of that and then synthesized it into uh, now an offering that we work with clients in to help them really go through this transformation process. And every single client, uh, it's always a different experience, but what we can definitely do is take the learnings that we take from one client and apply it to, uh, to their new situation as well. What we're gonna be talking about today is why and how digital is changing how we work, the impact on human capital and why we need to plan for it now. Uh, then I'm going to talk through a few different case studies. So these are experiences that I've had working across a banking client, a uh, Commonwealth Bank in Australia, J&J, uh, &J uh, uh, which is a, um, a luxury skincare brand here in Singapore, and OMD, which is a media agency. So I'm just going to talk through some of the practical nature. So when I talk about digital transformation today, I'm really thinking about what are the learnings that we went through, including some of the failures, to be honest, some of the challenges that we had, you know, what worked as well as, as well as what didn't work. So hopefully you can take it back through to your teams and your clients that you're working with and, uh, and learn from that. And finally, building a learning organisation, which I think is absolutely at the heart of developing an effective digital transformation approach for your business. So, you know, we, we talk a lot about the, the impact of technology. I think these, for me, are the three key drivers that are changing or are the reason that we're undergoing this transformation. Internet of Things, so connected devices. Everyone has a smartphone in their pocket, which is a more powerful computer than you know, what existed uh, many years ago. Uh, connectivity, so we're all connected, and as a result, we're generating huge amounts of data. So that's a really simplistic way of then looking at all of these. But these are the three key areas that are really driving uh, technology change and as a result then we have access to reams and reams of data which we should actually be thinking about using as we plan out our strategies for our businesses. But this is what's really at the core of driving digital transformation. There are two forces that we see as a catalyst for this digital disruption and so really we can simplify it down to two things. One is digital technologies and the other is organisation. From a technology perspective then so what are the different technologies that we have access to uh, that mean that we can uh, access all of this data that's being generated and figure out a way to be able to use that in our business offerings. And secondly is the organisation of this. So how are we then using all the information that's being created in our business uh, to be able to find consumer insights and to gain a competitive ev edge over our, client, uh, over our competitors, I should say, to be able to service our customers better. When we look at the future, really, it's about scalable efficiency. So how are we taking this information, that all this data that's being generated, uh, how can we work with this in an effective way? And ultimately, we need digital technology and machines to be able to help us manage that efficiency. So the machines will help us with that, and then the humans will continue to focus on the work that is more around creativity and curiosity. And that's where we really need to think about what types of skills we're building at in our teams to be able to drive it an effective digital transformation. 
Okay, so I just want to level set here and look at when we talk about digital transformation, what are we actually talking about? So this is the model that we use here. It's actually, it's looking at digitization of business. And really there are three key buckets that we can put this into. Digitization of assets. So in your business, are you looking at how to digitize your infrastructure uh, using connected machines or different types of data platforms? Digitization of operations. So this might be your back end processes, your front end processes, your digital customer experience. How are you connecting with customers? How are you meeting people's expectations in a new <coughs> digital age? Also looking at new business models. Uh, and potentially it's also looking at your supply chain background as well. And then thirdly, the digitization of the workforce. So what tools are the people in your workforce using to be able to better engage with customers in a digital world? Uh, and also to be able to access all that data that we talked about that's being created and use it as a sustainable competitive advantage for us. Ultimately then, there are a whole raft of new digital jobs uh, that are being generated and skill sets required. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about here. Where we focus, and I'll just talk about my experience personally, is that uh, we focus more on these areas here. So we're not looking at assets at all, uh, there are a raft of other businesses that do that. We focus more on the human side of things. So how are we making sure that teams have the right skills and the right behaviours to be able to operate effectively in a digital world? So I just want to touch on this here because you know, when we start talking about the future of work and the skill sets required, AI always ends up coming up as a part of the conversation. And I think because the media is doing such an amazing job at really scaring everyone about uh, what's going to be coming down the line, of course, I think there's, there's some validity for sure in thinking about what are the skill sets that are going to be made redundant and how can we better prepare our businesses and our teams for that. I think it's definitely a conversation that we need to be thinking about. But also, I see the future of work as <coughs> machines and, uh, and humans working together. So in fact, and this is actually uh, taken from, uh, so I don't know if any of you have read Kevin Kelly's book uh, about the um, 11 forces of change that are actually going to be driving uh, digital in future. So he talks about this idea of being able to plug in AI as, as almost like electricity into your business. So it will be just one other methodology which you will be able to bring into your business to be able to access data and service your customers in a new, in a new way. So this is interesting because then, this, then we need to think about, well, how are we as humans working with that artificial intelligence? How are we, what skill sets are required? How do we structure our teams? You know, how do we operate in a way that we are able to access that, te that technology and use it effectively? So this, I, I think this is fascinating because I actually think the future is about actually allowing us to do more of the work that we as humans should be doing, creative work, Work that requires curiosity, drawing out insights, you know, not all of that deep number crunching or data crunching that many roles are currently needing to do now. So I just want to talk a little bit about an experience, you know, certainly I've worked across media agencies and I would say that, you know, when we think about the impact of something like artificial intelligence, and it may seem in some of your businesses that it's still something that's a long way away. In media, we've absolutely seen this have a direct impact on what we do on a daily basis very, very quickly in the last five years. And so, uh, when I talk about this, I'm talking about advertising technology specifically. Google and Facebook are AI-driven businesses, or machine learning-driven businesses, I should say, that have complete, completely changed the media buying landscape. There's a whole raft of other advertising technology businesses that have come into the market, and actually we can see that there is a huge percentage of the ad business going through a technology now. What has that meant for our teams? So I'll tell you that actually there are roles in media agencies now that certainly were not around five years ago, three years ago, two years ago. You know, this is all changing very, very quickly. Now we can see that there is a large proportion of these businesses where humans are needing to interact with artificial intelligence and manage machine learning to be able to effectively deliver advertising campaigns. So what have they had to think about from a skills perspective? One, they've needed to learn new interfaces. But I think, you know, sometimes when people think about humans working with artificial intelligence, they have this image in their head that it's going to be, you know, me working with like a, a bot, you know, like a human-looking robot even. But that's not the case. You know? It's actually, it's, it's already coming to our workplaces now. And it's really about figuring out 
how do we use these different types of interfaces to draw out insights and, uh, and create new skills in our business to be able to do that. So I like to talk about this uh, idea of the Gary Kasparov effect. So uh, anyone here know Gary Kasparov? I'm sure many of you do, yeah. So a very famous chess player. Uh, so there's been a lot of coverage about what he's done over the years because interestingly he played uh, some artificial intelligence in a game of chess many years ago and lost. He's a world master, shouldn't have lost, did, uh, the, the machine won. But what is interesting about this guy is he now actively works alongside machines and he says that actually what we should be looking to do is augment our skills as humans by working with machines. And in fact, we get an even better world-class effect when we team up. So that's the way that we are going to be working in the future and that we're already looking to work towards. This is already happening across a number of industries and, uh, and as I mentioned, media is just one of those. So with digital transformation, teams absolutely need to evolve. And so I just want to put this out here, this fact that 65% of children entering primary school today will ultimately end up working completely new jobs that didn't exist when they were so we pulled out here, this is just a list of the different types of job roles. An excellent book that I can really recommend, it's called The Future of the Professions by uh, Susskind and Susskind. It's a, uh, a father and son professor uh, pair. So this is really interesting because you know, we can already see some of these jobs starting to evolve and we're, we're looking at how we can help build those skills in a team. Uh, some new jobs, like things like uh, empathizers. Uh, I'm not totally sure what that is, to be honest. Uh, it sounds a little bit like a, you know, something out of the minority report. Uh, but certainly, the human ability of empathy is something which machines cannot replicate. So this is a skill that actually, we, we all sort of take this for granted now, but in fact, this is going to become a benefit for us as we move forward. So, as I said, I'm really hopeful about the future because I think that working with artificial intelligence, for instance, gives us the ability to spend on tasks that are more human, strategic, more creative. But then we need to think about how we're actually building those skill sets into our teams because at the moment the education system is really still geared up for teaching information rather than behaviours. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about successful digital transformation projects and how they have uh, the human capital at the core. And actually I'm going to start with a case study which was not so successful because I think it's interesting to learn from our failures as well. But, you know, certainly digital, it's about, uh, it's not just about skills, it's about behavioural change. Okay, so quick, uh, quickly looking at the case study from the Commonwealth Bank. So is anyone familiar with the Commonwealth Bank here from, yeah, anyone from Australia here? Yeah. So the Commonwealth Bank, Bank is a, is a, a uh, very big institution from Australia. It's been around for years. Uh, you know, it has a heritage of being a very old uh, ex-government type of organisation. When I started working with, with them on this specific project, they had a view to being uh, to bringing in an entrepreneurial culture into their business. So they did this by implementing a design thinking approach and agile in their business. They hired someone from Silicon Valley who was an expert in, these, in, in this way of working, to be honest. When <coughs> I started working with them, I mean, this is a few years ago in Australia now, I hadn't heard of it before, so it was all new to me, and it's definitely all new to the business. But the goal was to try and create this culture of entrepreneurialism in the business. People who think like entrepreneurs, but are employed by corporate. So, and this is another really good book, The Startup Way by Eric Ries. So Eric Ries is the guy who wrote about the Lean Startup approach a few years ago and now has a new book out. So there is some, there is some, I, this is actually a new book and when I look at, look at it retrospectively, this is exactly what we were looking to implement in the Commonwealth Bank scenario. But back then we didn't have as much guidance about how to do it, to be honest. And so it was uh, part success, part failure for a variety of reasons. But ultimately, the idea of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, sorry, I should say, is about building a small team, and I like this idea of calling it the two pizza team. The team should be big enough to be able to eat two pizzas together and that's it. Keep it small, keep it agile, keep it focused on the customer, and, and operate in a way that is really agile. So this is what we were trying to implement at Commonwealth Bank. Now, we started this journey uh, with 
so the, the brand is actually called My Wealth. It's been killed off now, but at the time it was a wealth management solution which was to bring together all of the different components that Combank provided for its customers to be able to get a singular view of their, of their wealth management. So as I said, you know, one of Australia's oldest institutions, you can imagine the culture in this organisation, right? So, you know, a very old, old school way of doing things. But at the time, they were going through a whole process of even changing up their office, you know, building out uh, the ability to hot desk. And then they brought this project in and hired this woman from Silicon Valley to really drive change in the business, to bring about a cultural shift. So they did recognise the importance of the human capital. But what I would say is that it was done in, yes, it was done in an entrepreneurial way in a small team, uh, the difficulty was in connecting that with all of the other partners within the business and external to the business as well. So when you have this team operating in an agile way, using design thinking, focused on the customer, really understanding the customer, when the rest of the business isn't focused on that, then certainly that's when you get challenges. But of course you need to start somewhere. So kudos to them to actually, for actually trying to implement this and using it as a place to start. And this is where a lot of businesses start. So, uh, you know, the, so the woman who was running the project said, you know, the best companies in the valley show that innovation is not simply about technology, it's about an organisation's inherent culture. Absolutely. And so, you know, if you're going to start to build out a new culture of business which is really able to tackle digital transformation, start with a small team, definitely, but ensure that you've got senior leadership support on board as well because you need it to come from both angles. You need people to believe and give the vision, and you need people to do the work as well. Uh, and then another quote from her, if we don't learn to fail sensibly, we won't innovate. The price of not innovating is failure anyway. Absolutely, I absolutely love this quote, because if you're not innovating, you absolutely are failing anyway, because there are tons of other businesses who are already out there trying to think of an idea which is going to be the killer idea in your industry, disrupt your industry. Okay, so what, what I just want to share learnings about this project is, so we, we had a small team, we were operating in an agile way. I was actually the head of strategy on the creative agency side working <coughs> in this project. And I would say probably one of the biggest learnings was the internal team was structured to work in an agile way. The partners weren't. We were still structured to work in a very linear way. So we were still operating with old style management, project management processes, and so was the rest of the business in which they needed to operate. So I think that's just certainly a learning. If you are looking to implement a, a particularly an agile approach within your business, think about who else you're connecting with, because then that's where certainly things can fall over. And that's, that was where it fell over for us, definitely. I think also really interesting learning is the budget planning process. So, you know, it, it needs to be changed so that you're not just focused on a project, that you allow a bigger budget which can allow for fluidity, I would call it, between projects within that group. So this is really helpful to know. Absolutely, clarify the value proposition up front, which is the whole core idea behind design thinking in the first place anyway. Truly understand your customers, understand what it is that they want. Be open to values and, yeah, as I said, connect with other parts of the business. Okay, so I want to mention uh, a, a case of Johnson & Johnson. So this is a project that we worked with, with uh, at the beginning of last year. So J&J &J is also a really old, established legacy business who is trying to drive digital transformation through different parts of their business. Uh, how they started to do this here in APAC is that they actually bought an existing business from Japan, which was an already successful business, and they brought it into their business to then learn how to go through digital transformation successfully and share those learnings with other parts of the business. So this actually was a, this is a su successful project. Uh, and so what we learned from this is that absolutely, uh, if you can hive off a, a, a section, either a business or a team, that it has full mandate of senior leadership to be able to drive digital transformation, then that really sets you up for success. So what it meant was that any time we were working on this project and we got pushback from other parts of the organisation who we were trying to work with, we, whether it be IT or the analytics team, whoever, we had senior leadership mandate to continue to drive that change forward absolutely was critical to success, so definitely a, a key learning. 
Uh, also, you know, it's about training agencies and partners to work collaboratively and digital first. So there was an expectation that everyone was in the room, everyone was equal across all the different technology and agency partners, and that we were working in an absolutely agile and fluid way. Uh, and so that even included things like using different types of ways of communicating. We tried Slack, it didn't work. We ended up on WhatsApp, that kind of worked, weirdly. Um, you know, probably not the most effective tool, you know, probably Chalo or Slack or something is better, but uh, I think it's about making, you know, if you have something that works, then use it. Uh, also, what was wonderful about this project was that we had a remit to identify all types of different innovation partners and test them out. And so what was great about this was that J&J &J used this as testing ground to work with all sorts of different partners that they could then, uh, that they could then use on other projects. So then this completely changed the way in which they, the, the skills within the digital team, or, with, or sorry, the behaviours within the digital team, I should say, the way in which they engaged with outside partners and internal partners. Now, was there a formal skills development or management process? No, actually. It was really, really agile. But what I would say is that when thinking about the, the, you know, the learnings from this project, the way in which we worked together was something that was definitely taken to other parts of the business afterwards. So the important part of this is we tested something, we figured out what worked and what didn't, but we actually fed that back into, into learnings to the rest of the business. And that's the key in driving digital transformation, is if you're testing something, whether it works or not, make sure you're recording it and sharing it. Okay. So, and then what's interesting as well is that this was a marketing-led project which drove digital transformation across other parts of the business because they were given the remit to drive transformation through digital. And so actually this is just, a, the, just the old website, new website. You can see some, <laughs> some improvements, but to be honest, it was more about, they were, you know, we were given remit to actually then uh, try out new different types of website technologies and different technologies that we wanted to use. So, the, the biggest issue was definitely in, uh, I would say, this, uh, you know, butting up against um, other departments. And so, you know, this, that just we needed senior leadership mandate to ensure that people were open to collaboration and to driving this change for the business. Okay, and the final case study I want to talk about is just an experience we had at the end of last year with OMD, which is a media agency. We work with them in Malaysia. This is the team, actually. Uh, but so, you know, one, wonderful team. Uh, and what was great about this project was that we were looking at actually, the team wanted to undergo, the business, sorry, I should say, wanted to undergo digital <coughs> transformation. And, and so what was identified by the team was that this was not just about changing skills in the team, it was about changing behaviours as well. And so we actually worked with them to do some pre-work before going into a training, uh, a series of training workshops uh, to identify what behaviours they want to focus on changing as well. So really putting the ownership back on them. Digital transformation is not just about learning new skills and changing the way they work with clients, but actually looking at what behaviours need to shift within the business too. And by this, I'm talking about things like developing a culture of curiosity ensuring that they embedded learning sharing sessions in the business. So that this was prioritised, even to, down to being a part of the KPIs in the job descriptions going forward. You know, it needs to have those hard metrics against it, otherwise you know, it's unlikely to, to shift. So we had the hard business metrics, so absolutely any digital transformation needs to have a focus on what are the business goals that we're trying to shift, uh, and then also look at the soft metrics. And so, the summary, you're changing your team's skills, knowledge, behaviours. We actually worked with them to then identify what those skills and behaviours were, because obviously this is, you know, we were in there for a two-month program with them, but that's not going to change in two months. This is something that needs a longer-term review. So, looking at where the team are now, and then where they're going to be in six months' time. So, what I'm interested in is going back in a few months' time and actually seeing how this change has really been uh, adopted within your organisation. So we worked with them beforehand to then, uh, well, the, the team identified different areas that they wanted to focus on. So they recognised that for digital transformation to occur, they needed to adopt a new mindset and attitudes. 
You know, so this wasn't just about skills and technology, it's actually a, a way of working. And so that's really hard in a legacy business. And I can, you know, to be really honest, you can see that there is almost like a line of age and experience over which people don't want to touch it and under which they are all over it and they want this. So this is the thing too, you know, when we work with the senior leaders in the business about this change, I think, you know, a lot of people come around to the fact that if they don't change, they are not going to be able to hire the staff that they want to be able to continue to run their business going forward. So this is a necessity now, not just a nice to have. So yeah, so it's about ch leading changes in, in ways of behaving, as well as you know different types of technology that they need to learn, uh, finding new ways of working together, and then actually developing out what those future skills are. And that's actually <coughs> where we came in in this project. So what we did with them was we actually developed an action-oriented learning project. So it wasn't just about coming in and doing a training session on, okay, this is how you do programmatic advertising, uh, this is what you need to do on a data and analytics front to be able to draw out insights for your customers. It was, okay, what are you actually facing in your business now? What live projects are you working on? Uh, we will run a training session with you and then we'll actually work with you on live projects to be able to help you instill not just the skills changes but the behavioural changes as well. And I would certainly recommend this as you're working with your teams on any type of training or whether you're working with your teams or your clients, when you're looking at training and skills and behavioural shifts, uh, don't just do it as a one-off. It needs to be a long-term program. And so, you know, inviting a trainer in to do a run a half-day session on something uh, isn't going to have quite the impact that you can look for. Uh, we've certainly found it needs to be based around a longer-term engagement that actually looks to get people working on things and learning by doing. So that then it meant that we saw some uh, we saw some success in how people actually were behaving and that could really drive digital transformation. Okay, so I'll just touch on a, a, a final couple of things here so around this building a culture of curiosity and innovation, which I, I know I've mentioned a couple of times. This is the this is the key going forward, you know, as we as we talk about driving transformation in business, we need to be thinking about the technologies we're working with, but also how we're behaving. How are we developing creativity in our business to be able to develop more innovative ways of working? Uh, I love this idea of creating a learning organisation. And actually, if you, if you look up, this is actually originally based on uh, an article in the Harvard Business Review from many, many years ago. It's actually from like 1993, I think. But the concepts are so, so relevant. And you know, they certainly had foresight when they were writing this. Absolutely still relevant now. There are five key things you need to think about when you're creating an organization that is going to drive successful digital transformation. And so this is then thinking about, you know, if, what do we need to focus on to drive transformation in our business? Number one, systemic problem solving. So this is really looking at having a data-led, scientific approach to what you're doing in your business. So, you know, it's all well and good to talk about innovation and change, but you need to have a feedback loop. That's where the learning occurs. So if you're trying something new, you're developing a new way of working or looking at launching a new project, it's about learning not just what worked, but what didn't work and creating a an inventory of that, if you like. And so there are a number of different examples out there of companies who have actually looked at what doesn't work and recording that for future success. Okay, experimentation, a culture open to risk taking. Uh, you know, so you know, certainly this is, I would suggest, probably the biggest challenge for most businesses. Developing a culture of risk taking, even the word the risk, um, even the word risk, I should say, uh, is something that scares off most businesses. But the thing is, as the quote said earlier, if you're not open to failing, then actually, you uh, that's the dangerous part of this now, is that you actually need to develop an openness to trying things, but build in the learning part from it. And then learn from that past experience. So you're tracking what's going on, uh, you're sharing that with your teams, you're actually developing training programs for your teams to be able to help them understand what worked and what didn't work so that they can then drive that change going forward as well. So then, you know, and absolutely this culture of learning from others 
this is really about having an open listening environment in, in your company. And a willingness, rather than a yes but, it's a yes and. So, you know, really it should be more, yes, okay, that's interesting, and I think maybe we could think about this. So, again, it's just building on that knowledge and then ensuring that we're transferring it between teams, recording it in a, in a more formal way and making sure that that knowledge transfer occurs in the business. So, uh, a lot of words on this slide. This is actually the final thing that I wanted to say, but I just, I wanted to put some prompt questions in here for you to go back when you're thinking about working with your teams and how you can successfully drive that human change as you're looking at digital transformation. How are you creating an environment that's more open to risk and exploring new ideas? And you know, I'd certainly suggest maybe if this is not something that your, your business is totally open to, uh, you know, step change. You know, try small things first. Uh, how are you using data and analytics to make business decisions? Is your team geared up to do that? Do, do they need the training to be able to look at how they can build this into, the, into their work? Are there cross-departmental teams being formed to leverage skills across the firm? So training doesn't need to be just a formal thing, it can be internal as well. And it absolutely should be as you start developing your hypotheses and your test and learn approach in your business. Are you open to working with external partners? One of the quickest ways for your team to learn is by collaborating with other companies who are already doing some of this. And that doesn't need to be necessarily a, um, you know, it could be a partnership rather than actually some type of paid way of working together. Just look to draw knowledge from others and see what you can learn from them. Uh, is there an openness to trying new digital solutions? And there are all sorts of different ways and it's going to be relevant to the function itself, but everyone needs to be looking at this now. And finally, are you truly customer centric? This is the whole point. So, you know, we talk about digital transformation. At the heart of it, we're not doing this because all this, there's all this fabulous technology. We're doing it because the consumer is asking for it. The customer is asking for it. They want to engage in a different way. They want to, they want to work with you in a different way. So understanding what drives them is at the heart of design thinking. And then that should be at the core of your digital transformation pro program as well. I'm really excited. I think that we are living in such an exciting time right now. The, I want to believe that technology is going to enable us to really work in new and exciting ways. And I think we just need to believe in this. Believe in the impossible, because it's more possible than ever now. Thank you very much. Uh, I think... Uh, <laughs>